So way back in chapter two, we talked about a speed limit for carriers in a semiconductor. It's on the order of 100,000 meters per second. A little bit lower for holes than it is for electrons. And here's a graph of it in silicon. So it's velocity on the vertical axis and it's electric field on the horizontal axis. Notice that the low electric field, 100 to 1,000 volts per centimeter, the velocity goes up one order of magnitude as it goes over one order of magnitude. This is a log-log graph. And when that happens on a log-log graph, you go up one order of magnitude and over one. That's linearity. Velocity is linear in the electric field, as we expect. The velocity of carriers when an electric field has accelerated them is the terminal velocity, and it is linear in that electric field. But at higher electric fields, it starts to level off until finally you reach velocity saturation, where the velocity stops responding to the electric field. That's as fast as you can ever go. Increasing the electric field further won't give you faster carriers. You can model these velocity curves where they are linear at the low electric field and they level off as you get higher. The electric field where the leveling off starts is called the saturation electric field. Because these curves are asymptotic, you can't pick out one particular electric field and say that it has leveled off beyond that. That point is never reached because that's not what asymptotic curves are about. So instead, pick a velocity and electric field right around where I'm pointing right here. Electric field around 100,000 and the corresponding velocity. And I'll show you in a minute what justifies it. But there you have the saturation electric field and the saturation velocity. If the carriers are any faster than that, the top curve is for electrons, then the electrons are said to be saturated in velocity. And the electric field where that happens is called ESAT. For your silicon, it's about 7,000 volts per centimeter. And the reason for that choice comes from the mathematical model. So here you have this velocity versus a field expression, which shows how the mobility is different now when you have an electric field. Instead of just mu mobility, you replace it with mu over this expression in the denominator where n equals 1 for holes and 2 for electrons. We're going to finish up just doing holes because when n equals 1, the math is simpler. And that will allow me to work through some expressions for you. Why E set? Why there? When the electric field equals this denominator, the velocity for holes is mu, the mobility, times E over 2. If they're electrons, those ends would be a 2. And, and you do your own math, uh, you'll find that the velocity is mu e over root 2. Giving that a name of e sat is just what has been decided because it is a referenced e field. It's something that we can point to and say that is a place that we can always find if this is the expression that we're using. And so that's the saturation e field and then the velocity at that point is the saturation velocity. Now you can take the electric field to infinity. because As the electric field goes to infinity, think about what this expression does. You end up with V is mu times E set. So it really is a suitable name for the denominator in this expression to call it E set. I want to make one really important point, and that is that the only thing that velocity saturation, which I just reminded you about, and current saturation, which we talked about last time, have in common is the word saturation. So don't confuse them for the same thing. They are not the same thing. Velocity saturation is the ultimate speed of carriers because of excitation of optical phonons. Last time we talked about the IV characteristic of a MOSFET, and it looks like this. This is the drain source current versus the drain source voltage. And each one of these curves is for a different gate voltage. But it levels off at some voltage, and we can even draw a parabola through the voltages where it levels off. And that's the parabola that describes the saturation voltage. And so VD set, the drain to source voltage at saturation, is given by where this red curve intersects each one of these characteristic uh, V curves. And then you're in saturation. Now that's current saturation. That's not the same thing as velocity carrier saturation, although they're not completely unrelated. The saturation of velocity does influence these expressions, and that's what we're going to talk about now. If I do have velocity saturation, 
going on, something else happens. Now you can be fairly certain that here we are at very high voltage. There probably is velocity saturation going on over here. But it can also be happening down here depending on, on a lot of factors. And in the event that you have velocity saturation in this region, you know, this is the linear region, 0 to 2 volts roughly, you have a different curve. So this is the 7 volt gate source voltage curve. So this is what happens, say, to the top curve if you have velocity saturation. It reaches its drain source saturation level sooner, and it levels off sooner. It'll look like that. And so that's what velocity saturation can do to an IV curve. And so this ID set, the, the current, when the drain source current is saturated, is arrived at a different drain source voltage than the simple expression that we came up with previously. This was a very convenient expression. And it made a lot of sense. You'll notice that as we increase the gate voltage, so the gate voltage 3, 4, 5, 6, drain source voltage where we arrive at saturation goes up exactly the same amount in one volt in this ideal image. Well, let's find out what happens to ID sat when you have velocity saturation. So we'll start off with the current IV characteristic that we derived last time. And it's the mobility that's being affected by velocity saturation. And we have our new expression, mobility over 1 plus E over E set. We're going to use that for mobility in here. Go ahead and uh, insert that in. Instead of mu sub n s, the surface mobility, we'll use surface mobility divided by 1 plus E over E set. Go ahead and put that in this expression for the drain source voltage. While we're at it, let's replace E, the electric field in the channel, with the drain source voltage over the channel length. Now I'll just stop for a minute while you uh, follow through the algebra that's in front of you. You can pause the video if you need to. There's the drain source current with a new expression for mobility and with E replaced by V drain source over L. That's IDS. That's at all levels of drain source voltage. But when you get to saturation, first of all, you're at a voltage you call VD sat. Okay, so we should replace VDS everywhere in here with VD sat. And when the drain source voltage equals VD sat, the drain source current equals ID sat. So let's just make that simple little uh, modification. All those VDSs, let's change them to VD sat. And when that is the case, we're at ID sat. That's the saturation current by brute force. It's not as informative as what we had last time, where we actually came up with an expression for ID sat. This really isn't quite it just yet, because VD sat appears explicitly in this expression. But let's hold this expression in the red box and go back now. Last time when we were deriving it, we had an intermediate result here, which I want to bring us back to. We had arrived at the statement that I drain source equals the inversion charge times the channel width times the velocity. J equals NEV is equivalent to that statement. Current is the charge per unit area times the width of that charge times the velocity of the carriers. That's always true. And let's use the expression that we came up with last time for the charge in the inversion layer. That's charge per unit area in the inversion layer. And the C oxide is the capacitance per unit area of the oxide. Put that expression in our expression for I sub dS. So let's make an argument here. And the argument is that V from the drain to the source is V from the channel to the source when X equals L. Because X equals L at the drain. X equals zero at the source. If we arrive at saturation, then V D sat is the voltage at the drain. And so I will use V channel source L. I'll replace that with V D sat. And if I replace V channel source of L with V D sat, then this I D S is actually I D sat. So I D sat is W times the inversion charge when you're at saturation times the velocity when you're at saturation. And for the inversion charge at saturation, use this expression, but we're using VD sat instead of V channel source at X. Because VD sat is the voltage at X equals L when you're in saturation. And so we have ID sat is W, and then all this stuff, 
C oxide, V gate source, V, all that stuff, V set. I'm not sure how to explain away the minus sign here, except that this expression just has to be the same as the previous expression for ID sat. The minus signs tell you directions of current. Uh, let's just presume them to be in the same direction. All right, so I used VD sat, and there's V is still there, only now it's V sat. And one more uh, modification would be to replace V, the velocity at saturation, with the surface mobility times E sat over 2. Go back to the first slide, we made that argument. Velocity at saturation is E sat over 2 times the mobility. And that's an expression that is an alternative to the one in the red box on the previous slide. So have them both written down and equate them, because they're both ID sat. So ID set is what we just came up with, but it's also what we had on the previous slide. And they have to be the same thing. But they have different stuff in them, a lot of different things in them, right? What One thing, though, that, that is zipped up there is VD set, because now I have a question for you. What's not in these expressions is ID set, and that's a good thing. You want to have an equation that has one or the other in it, so that you can actually solve for it. Because if you have an equation that has both of them in it, you can never figure out what it is, what ID set and VD set are, if they're both in the equation. So now we have an equation that has only VD set. Do some algebra. Solve it for VD set. So I'm going to just let you do that right now. So solve it. Actually, not for VD set, but solve it for 1 over VD set. The algebra is a lot easier. But go ahead and do that right now. Pause it. Okay, so you have solved for it and you found that expression. And that's the drain source voltage when the IV curve is saturated, accounting for velocity saturation. What in this expression accounts for velocity saturation? It would be this first term here, 1 over E sat, that's the electric field when velocity saturates, times the channel length. Otherwise, if you don't have this first term here, VD set is exactly what we arrived at in the last lecture for the drain source voltage at saturation. Velocity saturation has a little bit of an effect on here. In the event that the gate is very wide, that is L becomes very large, that's referred to as a long channel. In the event of a long channel, VD set returns to the original expression. Velocity saturation only affects the IV characteristic when the channel is short, so that this term is significant, this first term is significant. So velocity saturation is referred to as a short channel effect. And we're going to cover a couple other short channel effects, such as parasitic resistance, before we are done with this. And we will see how the IV model is adjusted to account for these. And it's important because as you shrink the size of integrated circuits, you have nothing but short channels. And the physics changes. Things can become much more quantum mechanical.